Seahawks fans, wherever you may be. Welcome back for another edition of the Seahawks Playbook Podcast. Join your host, Phil Alpstead, and co-host, sports writer and football analyst, Keith Myers, as we talk Seahawks football. Hey, Seahawks fans. Welcome back to another edition of the Seahawks Playbook Podcast. I'm your host, Phil Alpstead, sitting down with Keith Myers. Going to have a fun show today, Keith. I know this is going to be a blast. We got a seven round mock draft that we're going to do live um, uh, while, you know, we're recording. So you're going to see um, us argue about stuff. We've got, um, wait, I'm trying to remember. I'm like thinking I'm playing the role of, um, of John Schneider and your Pete Carroll. Where's your Um, uh, WWE belt? No, I I, I don't don't see it. Yeah. I told you I'm not, I'm not going shirtless (laughs) for this. It's not going to happen. And um, I didn't shave my goatee, and you know, I did. Yeah. I forgot my gum too. So, oh, see, we, are you at least, are you at least wearing the white shoes? Well, I'm wearing a white shirt. That's <laughs> definitely evident. It's popping off. Um, and I'm I'm wearing. I'm, I'm, I got the. I did get the blue polo, so I'm like yeah, I'm, I'm, sh- I'm setting I'm, up. So I'm shoeless. I will have you know. <laughs> um. So and and the 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 fun thing about this show is, in you know, traditionally and typically, in, in all the mocks we've done previously we decided to do a few more mocks this year than than we have in the past but um previously we've kind of brought in our own thing done our own mocks just talked about them basically a- after already doing them and kind of explaining what we did this um you know using the nfl mock draft database website we can kind of do this live and and uh, the technology we have uh with our virtual studio we're able to share the screen so we can actually do that live and, and share the screen with you and kind of go through the logic of each pick what we decided to do that's unique uh, about this show is we decided to team up i'll play the role of pete carroll whatever we're going to team up though and we're going to make the decisions on each pick at each level including trades if we have trades or any any decisions we have together and we have to agree on those before we make the selection so that'll be kind of fun to go through those um, discussions and arguments and agreements and all that good stuff so first of all though keith um i just want to mention we'll have probably a proper show around this um the coaching changes we've had a few uh in the past where we've discussed them but now it's kind of solidified that the team has made some uh, some changes all around, and I kind of like it, Keith. What do they you got, think? They got young on the coaching staff, and I am not against it. After watching, you know, kind of the old guys last year, um, they they've decided to to go young, and uh, I like. There's a lot of a lot of smart defensive minds, a lot of creative guys, um, mm-hmm. and a lot of young guys uh also it, it is interesting how heavily pete carroll has um leaned on the uh vic fangio coaching tree and in, in yeah. creating creating this this defensive coaching staff so i'm yeah it's crazy let's talk about it just for a second so clint hurt was promoted from defensive line coach to defensive coordinator Mm-hmm. As you mentioned, the Vic Fangio tree, uh, and we'll get into that a little bit more. Uh, Sean Desai was recruited heavily by the team. He went out and interviewed. Uh, he was previous defensive coordinator with Chicago this last season. He had spent nine previous seasons with them as well. He went out after their coaching staff was dismissed earlier and uh, interviewed for two or three different defensive coordinator jobs. Seattle had that position uh, kind of dangling there for him just in case I think as a fallback ended up coming to fruition uh, he joins Clint Hurt those guys have have some background together and know each other and Clint's uh, ecstatic to get Sean Desai on the uh, on the roster as associate head coach on the defense I don't know exactly how that's all going to fit and work together with P and with Clint and how they make decisions egos are obviously going to be set aside there but his mind is, I think, really what they were after. Yeah, and so what what this ended up working out as is uh, Clint Hurts going to call the plays on game day. Like he is going to be the one calling the plays in um, to get Desai to join the staff. What they had to do was one, give him a title and thus compensation 
uh, worthy of a defensive coordinator, even if he's not going to be at that position. Hence the associate head coach, right? So he's like, it's like an assistant head coach. Um, and then the other part was he needed um, j- a job description that was going to include game planning. So he's going to be watching, you know, film and, and planning and, and scheming how, what they're going to do. He may not call the plays on game day, but he's going to put the plan in place um, along with Clint Hurt uh, in order to figure out what this team is going to do on game day. And that's the part that he wanted. And yeah, no, that's exciting. You know, and, and um, Clint had a, you know, press conference yesterday. He talked about a lot of different things, but one of the things he talked about was working together with Sean to put players in better position to be successful this year. You know, yes. we saw a lot of stuff last year that just didn't really make a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, Clint Hurt saw the same things and agreed that those things don't make a lot of sense. And um, and then specifically he called out like Jamal Adams, use, using Jamal Adams and his skill set um, to the best of their ability to be a little bit more aggressive. Um, I think to find players that are more suited, well-suited, in their scheme. So I think there's going to be a lot of interesting selections and changes this year. And we'll go through some of that as we go through the mock draft today. Mm-hmm. Um, as we talk about that, the other coach I thought that was, well, there's a couple of them that I thought was really interesting that, and I really like this guy, Carl Scott, defensive pass game coordinator and defensive backs coach. This is a home run for this team to get Carl Scott previously with Alabama um, coached up some great defensive backs there. They run a very similar scheme uh, to what Sean Desai and uh, Clint Hurt do in the, in the Fangio scheme mm-hmm. um, on, the, on the back end. And I, he's just such a, um, a very good student of the game and teacher. And so this is going to be, like I said, I think it's a home run to get Carl Scott in, okay. in that in- role. Another young guy. Um, so one of the things that I, people are going to see Clint Hurt, like, oh, it was a promotion. It, he was the guy. This, it's going to be more of the same and all of that. Clint Hurt's been with Pete Carroll for, um, what is it, five years. But he had spent. Or three. Three, I think, right? Is it three? Yeah. I don't remember. It was something like that. It, it's been the last few years. But before that, he was with in the Fangio uh, tree and in that coaching staff and and w- in Chicago. And, and he is a guy that. Yeah, he's been in Seattle with Pete, but that isn't all he knows. That isn't, you know, where he got his start. That's not where he learned most of his, you know, uh, his coaching uh, chops and all of that. Like it was, it was in Chicago with that Fangio tree. So yeah. I think and that he's just so smart. I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's great. It I, really I, is great. I loved what I heard from him. The, you and I had so many complaints the last couple of years about not putting players in position to be successful, but not letting players do what they do best. Um, and that was what came out from the. Yeah. Well, that's what eventually got Norton fired. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it should have happened at least a year earlier, but uh, we're hearing that we're hearing the right things. And it's not like it's being prompted by anyone other than, I mean, you and I keep saying it, but I'm not seeing it out there in a lot of places where everyone's like, you know, this is what's wrong and, and, you know, not doing this. And so it's not like he's being given cues. Hey, this is what I need to say to make fans happy. Um, he's just noticing that himself and being like, we can't do that anymore. We've got to put players in position to be successful. Yeah. And I love it. I love it. Yeah. I think the trio, you know, plus Pete Carroll, I mean, this they've got one of the best young defensive coaching staffs, I think, in the league. And I think it's going to prove out as long as they can get the talent in to kind of make their plan on the field work together. And I think, you know, they have that mindset, you know, and I think it's just a matter of executing it and getting it done. We'll see how it comes together in free agency and in the draft. The other uh, coach that they they added on the offensive side was Sanjay Lal, uh, mm-hmm. offensive pass game coordinator and wide receiver coach. Again, another home run type of a hit um, with getting a, a guy of that caliber to come back in and um, – and be with the team. And then Andy, Andy Tickerson uh, was promoted to offensive line coach. Mike Solari was let go. I wanted to get your take on that, Keith, since you do pay attention to the offensive line and kind of find out if uh, if you think that's going to work along with Shane Waldron as offensive coordinator. 
I do. Um, so, okay. So Solari wasn't let go because he did a bad job. Um, he actually ha- juggled a lot of pieces and got guys like uh, Jake Curran, who was an undrafted rookie free agent, ready to start by midseason. I mean, he did a good job. The, the main difference and the reason why they made that change had to do with scheme. Because Shane Waldron wants to run a lot of outside zone, a lot of um, uh, zone stretch plays, get the get the defense moving laterally. Uh, Mike Solari's forte is running inside zone, where you do a lot of you know a lot of stuff right in the middle of the line and that kind of stuff. But it it doesn't challenge the defense as much. Um, okay, it also worked with the with the players that we had in the past with um, yeah. you know big uh, guys. Road yes, graders. the road graders that, that block straight forward well. So um, as we make this transition to a uh, an offensive scheme that that looks more like what you saw, um, you know, the Rams doing in the you know in the playoffs and what the the Forty Niners do, um, it, it's about getting defensive linemen moving laterally instead of upfield, and they want they want someone who, who's better at teaching that and um you know having that be their their thing and that's why they made this change um solari is going to land on his feet like if he hasn't already landed a job by now i'm probably gonna be i haven't watched and i haven't right he hasn't yeah just saying that yeah i'm i it it, that has probably has more to do with him taking his time and picking the right spot because he's a great coach who's really well respected well this just happened two days ago yeah you got to give him a little bit of time yeah i mean so he's (laughs) he's gonna land He's going to land on his feet um, sure. at, with a with a, 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 a nice job on a good team. So uh, I'm not concerned at all, you know, in terms of his future. Um, I just am I'm glad to see them get coaches in place that uh, their special their teaching special team lines up with the scheme that they've got. All right, so we'll have maybe we'll have another show. We covered quite a bit of ground. Um, in that little piece there. So let's get onto this mock draft and have some fun, Keith. What we're going to do is I'm going to, we are using NFL mock draft database website, and I'm going to add that to our stream right now. As you can see, uh, I've got uh, their website brought up um, and you can see my mouse moving around on the, sh- on the screen here. Uh, I will bring up, we, uh, Keith and I do another show and I don't know if, you know, everyone knows that or not, but we kind of do a, uh, a national show and we are affiliated with the NFL mock draft database to be on their, uh, website. I'm going to close these pop-ups as they come up, um, to be on their website as their, as their front facing media, um, and talking about NFL, um, all 32 teams, NFL draft, all that kind of stuff. And so we've got our show up here and you can, um, go to their website, click on their podcast page, and here we are. So just thought I'd mention that. Have we really already done 29 shows? I know, Wow! right? <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's crazy. Okay, right. so what we're going to do is I'm going to move down to the um, to the mock draft area. Let's see where that's at. Let's bring this up. We're going to do mock draft simulator. And... We're going to drop down here, close this window again. And their simulator is really good. And it offers you uh, the ability to do all 32 teams, or you can select your team. And we're going to do that. We're going to go down and select the Seahawks. We're going to draft for the Seattle Seahawks, obviously. And then uh, 2022, all seven rounds. You can choose as many rounds as you want to do, obviously. And then the, uh, the interesting part of the simulator is you get to choose the um the way that the mock draft runs and you can uh, do it fast normal or slow realistic aggressive chaotic uh, free for all or you can be strict uh i figured we just kind of keep the settings as as normal we could probably just go ahead and just do fast just because we can get through the picks in between picks quicker that way Um, we can stop it and pause it anytime if we want to talk about a player or whatever realistic that's fine um these other ones are just so you get occasionally you get other players pop up um that that are out of sync with their big board um if you want to do that occasionally and then strict is i think the most realistic that we can get as far as trading so if we want to be able to trade either back or come back up it gives us 
more of a realistic uh, trade value um, that we're going to need to do to complete trades. So I think that we keep it on strict. And then yeah, uh, free, we can free, name the mock if we want to. Let's name it. Free for all is fun when you're, um, if you're just really bored and you're like, hey, what happens if I trade, you know, Seattle's third round pick for the first overall pick? And, you know, you can just do anything you want. And it's just kind of dumb. But it's also like, <laughs> it's kind of fun, you, you know, once in a while. If you, if you need to laugh, like that's what, that's what that one's for. But um, all right, let's go. Okay, so we're going to start. This thing's going to run a simulation. Obviously, the Seahawks don't have a first-round pick, so it's going to basically go all the way until the Seahawks pick at 41, and it basically runs by itself. So we'll just watch it go, and it's going quite quite fast. There you go. All right, here we go. All so right. now what, what we've done of... is if we go back and just look at some of the picks, um, if, you, if there's any that stand out, and, and you were hoping that maybe one of these guys dropped to um, to the Seahawks. Well, they're, one of the interesting ones I've already seen is Phila Fale, Um Yeah, right you know, here. Yeah, coming right before Seattle. That's yes. uh, that's. I was Chicago. hoping he'd go before Seattle drafted. Yeah, kind of. Um, that's <laughs> Chicago taking a, a yeah. tackle. You've got the Lions getting Matt Corral in round two. That ends yeah. up pretty good. There's some. There's uh, Jermaine Johnson. He's gone. Yep, guy I really like. Trent McDuffie is a guy who's going to get a lot of press in Seattle because he's from Seattle. Yeah. Trevor Penning is probably the best. Uh, I like I like him. I hope some in. way he falls, but yeah, he went to twentieth. He's that's he's not going to be available. So let's see um, who's available okay. for okay. Seattle. So the way this works up at the top is um, we can trade if we can initiate a trade if we don't like this pick. Uh, we can see who's available in all positions, or we can choose uh, different position groups that are available. So these are the current uh, players available on the big board. Uh, Roger McCreary is uh, is is a favorite cornerback in this draft, but I had pointed out um, a few days ago that he's got 29 mm -hmm. and a half inch arms, which is just not going to work, I don't think, for Seattle unless they've completely changed their criteria. Trey McBride's um, the best um, tight end in this draft. Yes. Zion Johnson's got a lot of value as an interior guy, possibly a center of the future. Um, he's sitting there. Uh, got a pair of running backs that are uh, the top rated running backs in the draft. No running backs at this point have gone off the board. Yeah. Isaiah Spiller from Texas A&M would be. Yeah. Or um, Bruce Hall even. Really. Either yeah. one. In fact, Brees Hall might might work even better, considering the uh, the outside zone scheme that that Seattle's trying to implement. Yeah. Um, let's see who else. I've got more. Quay Walker is an excellent linebacker. Desmond Ritter, another quarterback. Seattle doesn't appear to be in that game. No. Nope. Um, George Perkins ooh, is kind of a Perry and Winfrey. Oh yeah. Now there's a guy that I would love to see in Seattle. This is a three tech um, defensive lineman, super disruptive. We talked about him on our senior bowl show, mm -hmm. um, a guy that's going to just be a dominant uh, pass interior pass rusher and his ability to get up field. It'll make our defensive ends better because they won't quarterbacks won't be able to step up Um in the pocket to avoid them, uh, that it would be a great, great yeah. and selection. And there's uh, Boy Moffy as well, mm -hmm. uh, another guy that we talked about quite a bit. Yeah, I'm kind of you know out of out of all the guys that we've mentioned. I mean, Perry and Winfrey. We've talked about what the needs are in Seattle, and we've talked and for at least personally for months, it seems like I've been talking about a disruptive mm -hmm. three tech, you know, on this team that would really set this defense up. You know, I think losing Jerron Reed and not really completely replacing him was a factor last year in not being able to have our defensive ends completely be able to turn loose without having to face double teams. You know, Jerron Reed mm -hmm. was able to take some of that. Um, I think a guy like Perry and Winfrey would be an excellent choice to be able to get back into having a, a presence in the middle of the defense. What are your thoughts on on the pick? I think I think that would be a fantastic pick. Um, really, I, I, you know me, and, and our our listeners know me. I'm the, you're everyone's going. Myers is gonna um, 
draft an <laughs> offensive lineman here. Um, but honestly, I think that we can uh, we can do some things. I, I don't see a offensive tackle here. No, that, well, that there's I, Nicholas Pettit free. No, I'm saying I don't see one that I have to go get that I have oh, okay. to go spend spend this pick on um, because the guys that I would have want like Perry and Winfrey are gone. And uh, so I'm looking at this and I go, that defense was bad last year. And I know people are going to say, Oh, it wasn't that bad. They were, you know, whatever in terms of scoring defense, they could not get off the field to save their lives. So um, I got a question for you. So since the NFL mock draft database is big board has Winfrey listed at 15 or uh, what was it 56 overall we're currently at pick 41 we should could we could we trade back and pick up some value i think we can still have him on the board if he happens to get chosen by a by a somebody coming up and, and getting him um are there other players on this board that you would be happy with if we traded back and he was gone yeah, I mean, we could go. We we could take a Zion Johnson and fix the center position. Um, Lewis you know, Sign I, is an excellent pick. I know that we're going to be looking at safeties in this draft, Keith, with this yep. with the schematic changes that we've got coming. So, uh, I yeah, I mean, there's there are there are a few. Um, okay, okay, and so let's so go let's, find a trade partner. Partner, I think um, trading wise, it makes the most sense to drop back just a few positions, maybe no more than say five to to eight spots yeah that's would be kind of the sweet spot and to pick up mm-hmm. some decent value so there are a few teams to do that <clears throat> let's go out and find one so we're going to trade now we've brought up the trade um trade machine uh we need to find a team that is um has got some good picks. I've identified six pre-draft here that we could drop down to. I think Philadelphia and or Baltimore, to me, have the best uh, selections available. Okay, and so um, Philadelphia ha- had three first-round selections yes. um, already. But there's a couple of quarterbacks there that I think could really interest them. Um Baltimore is going to be looking for running backs and with both running backs sitting there, uh, they could definitely be in a position to move up and take whichever one is their favorite. So uh, both of those are, I'm going to, I'm going to look at Baltimore first and you can tell me what you think. Um, They've got an opportunity here. We only could drop back four spots. We might be able to pick up say 117. Maybe you know, maybe two picks, one seventeen, and maybe one forty, something like that. Um, let's take a look at Philadelphia and see what they've got. We'd be dropping back a full ten spots, Keith. That's tough, but maybe we pick up that eighty three, possibly. If or, we could get that eighty, that eighty three would be huge because let's let's take a look and see if they'll do that. So fifty one to forty one and eighty three. No, nope. let's see. But if we added. No. Yeah. No. See, you're you're talking. We'd have about, to go. We'd have to give them too much. Okay. Yep. I'm. I think that's too much, and it's 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 ten spots. That's a lot of teams picking. So Where the guy we want. I've got. Okay. Cleveland also has some opportunity as well in New Orleans, but let's take a look at and see what we can do with Baltimore. We're just dropping back a little bit, so it's not going to be the the compensation. Yeah, see, so it's a one seventeen. One seventeen. So, um, and we already have, I think, one oh seven. So that would yep. give us two and, picks and one fourteen. That would give us three picks right in that range, right? If we wanted to, like, move back up. It's true. So, what does Cleveland have? Cleveland has us uh, forty four, and then seventy eight, ninety eight, one oh five, one sixteen. We could take a look. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but if this is the one trade that we do in this draft. Look at 44 and 116. Yeah. So moving up one spot in each of those two those two rounds was too much. How about um, the Dolphins at 50? I'm just curious. I just want to see. Will they give us 101? Yes, they will. Will they give us 157 with it? 
No, they won't. <laughs> 198, yes. Yeah, I'm not all that interested in 198. Well, so. you might be interested in 198 when the sixth round comes along. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, there's there's that. There's nine spots to get into the third round and, and pick up an extra. And I'm more interested in the in the Baltimore trade where we we yeah we get into 117, which is the fourth round, but we only have to drop back four spots. Let me see if there's anything so, else back here. No, so that's it. Can't give okay. us 140. You want to complete this? Let's do it. Okay. So let's find out. Let's find where out where we're at draft board. Um, so we missed out on Roger McCurry, Zion, Zion Johnson, Lewis Sign, Quay Walker. So all of our players are still available. Well, yeah. So the guy that we wanted, uh, and Isaiah Spiller went. Oh no, he's still there. Yeah, uh, you, so you, you Winfrey's still about. there. And um sorry, I have to move around a little bit. Isaiah Spiller's still there. Sam Howell, I mean, if you <laughs> were after a quarterback, I mean we could try to conceivably drop back now a little bit more we could go back to the dolphins and see what, what um, they'll give us what they'll give us let's let's go back i just i'm just curious uh where's miami on here all right so let's go 45 to 50 and would they give us 101 no would they give us 119 yes would they give us anything else they give us 198 might as well take it so sure. what do you think you want to do that? Um, not, we could lose out. Not really, but um, <laughs> do it. Just do it. Okay. All right. And so let's now, go look at the draft board. Now scare me and, and oh, and there went Perry and Winfrey. There the went Perry and Winfrey. Yep. So David, this is where okay. you clicked you over and then no. Uh, <laughs> go back let's to okay. Go, now we need a draft because the guy that players. I was looking for. Okay. So. We've got value still on this. Board. Lots, lots, lots of value. Of value. Um, there's our a tackle. If you're into Nicholas Pettit, Ferrier, mm -hmm. George Pickens is there. Kingsley White and Barry, the a edge good rusher pick. from South Carolina. Yep. Um, Cameron Thomas, Boy Mafe. I'm See, not a Boy Max Mitchell uh, fan. I'm not either. Um, Boy Mafe was the it was kind of our um, if we you know he was always going to be there and is still a fit. Um, man, I'm not a huge fan of Pickens at, at offensive tackle. I know. Um, I know. So people would kill us too if we drafted Spiller. I say I know you and you want Spiller. Um, but I would rather not this? at this spot. Yeah, I would rather not. I think that there's there's a whole host of third and fourth round running backs that I think would be adequate. Mm -hmm. But you know, Spiller may be the difference maker in your offense. You know, there's a there's an argument to be made about a guy like Spiller being a great back and being a perfect fit in Seattle. There's just no question he is. Um, the question is, do you want to use that? Have we solved the problem before the draft? All those kind of questions. But let's make a decision. So, uh, you know, offensive tackle or edge rusher to me, I think makes the most sense with players uh, available. Um, Boy Mafe, Cameron Thomas, uh, in the, Kingsley and Barry. Um, yeah. Um, in in Barre, I think, is the guy. Let's, um, what yeah. do you think of him? I like him. I really do. Let me take a look at him really quick. He's got the, <clears throat> the rub on him is his, um, his speed, it's not great. Everything else is great, though. Um, 6'4", 261, runs a 478. At least that's the estimated time. Um, but he's very long, Keith. 35-inch mm -hmm. arms, uh, 83 and 5'8 inch wingspan. Um, he does a lot for your for your team, you know? Yep. He's a good 5'0". Um, and he really stood out at the Senior Bowl. And with a guy like uh, Rasheem Green leaving getting a guy to replace him and possibly even upgrade that spot slightly. Um, I'm all for that. Let's do that. 
Okay. The only other guy would be like a boy Mafe, but mm-hmm. he's, I think he's rated down, down the line on yes. most boards. So let's do this. All right. So now we go off we go. Let's go back to the draft board. Let's find out what happened here. Um, so after we picked at 50, let's see who came off the board. Bisker, Cameron Thomas, Boy Mafe, Boy Mafe. Um, Majai Sanders, Sam Williams, so all a bunch of edge guys right there back to back. The which offensive okay, tackle. Which is okay like, that the edge rushers went. I think Seattle's actually got you know, um, a nice crop of edge rushers. They so needed, here, here, they, yeah. they need, they need more interior help. And I think yes. that, um, maybe we, we can got, find something. We got a, no, well, we got a player that can play inside out. He can play five tech at, sure. and, and slide into the three. So I think that, um, that, that was, it ended up looking at this as a good selection for us. So here's a whole bunch of uh, offensive linemen, Keith, that went off the board. Max Mitchell, yeah. Nicholas pettit Ferrer, Jamari uh, Seiler, mm-hmm. you know, Ed Ingram, Ed, Sean Ryan. I mean, uh, goodness Sean, gracious. But look, Sean Ryan was, was the guy that I was hoping would be there for this pick. Martin honest, Emerson is an underrated cornerback. Um, so let's go and look at who's here. Who's available? Yep. Look at Sam Howell dropping. Look at Trey, Trey McBride look at, look dropping. At Isaiah Spiller. We solved the the defensive uh, lineman issue. Wow. So I'm now I would consider a running back. You know, I'm in a spot now where I would consider a running back. We're in the third round, Keith. He's got second round value, high mid to high second round value. Um, so that would be interesting. Isaiah likely at a tight end, I think, but he's not going to be an inline guy for you. Mostly just mm-hmm. a receiving tight end, but this offense may need one depending on what we do. Um, yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at two players here. I'm looking at, uh, Trey McBride, the, Ooh, there's Jalen um, Petrie, one of my favorites out of the senior ball. Yeah, okay, so, go ahead. So I'm, look, like I said, I'm, I'm looking at, at Trey McBride, the tight end out of, um, Colorado state. And um, Isaiah Spiller, the the running back out of out of Texas A and M, both of those guys are incredible value at this spot, and they would they would fill a massive need. I think Spiller is probably the better. Um, think about the value that it would bring to our offense. We've yeah, talked about solving solving yep. the running back problem. We've had mm-hmm. injuries with Chris Carson and um, Rashad Penny and Rashad Penny. We don't, we don't know what's going on there. I mean, we will, you know, by the time it happens. So let's solve this. Let's get Isaiah Spiller. Now, my it, question to you is if we get go Spiller now and we still might need an offensive lineman, would you consider using some of the draft capital we, we got previously to move up if we found a guy that we liked? Well, who was available on the offensive line? Well, I was line? I was thinking like the the Abram offensive tackle situation, and I know that he's still out there. Let's find out where he's he's at on this draft board. Abraham Lucas, right there, ninety nine. There we don't pick mm-hmm. though until one hundred seven. He may be gone. He's Would you probably cons- going to be gone. We should probably look at moving up into let's, yeah. So let's pause the draft the when we get to like eighty five and just okay. see where we're at. Um, Isaiah Spiller. So I got. <laughs> I got to get into the pause scenario here, Keith. So I'm going to reduce my, so I can see my board, reduce that a little bit. um, Because I'm going to have to pause this as soon as I make the selection. Because it's going so fast. Okay, we're at 80. Um, There's the selections. Mm Mm-hmm. So can I go a little bit further? Yep. Okay, 85. I, okay. You want to see if we can put it together a trade? Yes, do it. And go get our guy. So let's say we're at 107. And we need somebody that's going to be at, where are we at? Oakland Raiders at 86. Where's, where's, not Oakland, uh, Las Vegas, sorry, Las Vegas, 86. And then what else do we need to add? So we're going to go. 
Try 119. 107, 114. Oh, that works. I was say try 119. Nope. No, so 119, 117. 117. And I'm okay with that. So we're going to trade away. But look, we still have 114 and 119. That <clears throat> yep. means nothing then. We still have two players there that we're going to get. Yep. And we're able to move up from 107 to 86 by doing that and go get the player that we want. So do that. Okay. So now we're on the clock. Now I'm going to go find my player. Um, all these. Now Channing Tyndall is a player that I don't think it's going to be here at 80, 83 in the draft. This is a guy with a lot of speed at linebacker. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to have something like that. Um, Alec Pierce is a nice wide receiver. Tariq Woolen, we've talked about Keith as being a, a corner with size and, and speed that we would like, physical guy. Wait, but Abraham still, Lucas. He's still available? He's there. He's sitting there. Uh, and Abraham Lucas, the, the offensive tackle from Washington State that we've talked about that we kind of – Sold ourselves on the last show. Yeah, um, I mean the CX are gonna they they need a guy that can play left tackle, and I like Abraham Lucas. I think he's he's uh, that guy moving forward. But to see um, Woolen there, I mean he is your he right. is your cornerback. Um, this is a team that desperately needs a cornerback, and he is. He is the DK Metcalf of um, of cornerbacks. Just six four, incredible athlete. Just like mm. he'll jump out of a building super fast. Like he's going to be a tester. There's no question about it, Keith. He's going to um, yeah. But then he, you've got your you've got your potential offensive tackle that could start for you right away. Yeah, I so. know. I we're gonna let's go with Lucas, and then you know we're just sit and wait and see if Woolen will drop to us. Um, I don't think he will, but man, I yeah. hope so. Good. Yeah. Well, you never know. I don't think he will either. But let's find out. I think this is a good pick. This is a value pick where we mm -hmm. needed to invest into the trenches, and that's what we're doing. Yep. And I think I saw Woolen go by. Yeah, that's a long way to go. <laughs> yeah. So here's the players that are available. Um, selection so far, the edge rusher, the running back, and the offensive tackle. I think those are great selections for us to, to solidify. Now the draft kind of just comes to us a little bit. We've got selections at 114, 119 right here, back-to-back -back almost. So let's see what we've got. Um, tight end. Is a, is a position that we could look at. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a whole bunch of them right there. Uh, Darian Beavers is an underrated uh, linebacker. Um, Vernon McKinley, Verone McKinley out of Oregon as a safety, as a as a free safety would be interesting. That would, it, that's, to me, that's gonna, I'm going to look at that and I'm going to say, well, what happened with, um, with Diggs? Because if Diggs is, uh, if Diggs is gone, then that's my pick yeah. right there. Well, we have two picks here, too. So to remember, that we're going to be picking fairly close here. Mm -hmm. um, so Alec Lindstrom, the center, I think is a great center for his own scheme that we have. He's like uh, 197, 6'4", 197. A little undersized. Put on a little bit of way, but he's, he's one of the most athletic guys in the draft in the interior offensive line. Mm -hmm. Like he would be a good fit in Seattle's scheme. And he they would need be a, a starter day one at center. And they, they need a center. And, um, well, being a starter in Seattle at center, that's a low bar to get over because there's just not a lot of talent on the roster Strange. right now. Cole Strange, too. Um, Haskell Garrett yep. on the interior defensive line. Um, let's go. Let's go with the center. Really? Um, and, and I'm looking at... Vernon there's McKinley. A uh, yeah, there's a lot of value here. Okay. You know, Isaiah likely is a is a guy that pass catching it, tight end. It's a pass catching tight end. To me, it, it comes down to what happened in free agency. I mean, mm -hmm. um, the top two uh well, we're not tight gonna ends, be able to we're not gonna know. Yeah, the top two the top two tight ends in, on Seattle's roster are both free agents. Um, my thing is you've already got the pass catching tight end. We believe there. So if they, you know, if they only bring back um, Disley, 
I think they're still okay. So that's why I'm saying going with the center, going with someone, we go into this draft going, we want to upgrade the trenches. We want to get better on the offense and defensive line. We want to make sure that the running game is solid because we've already got the wide receiver talent. We've got the quarterback talent. Let's make that work. Um, and if we upgrade, you know, the, the defensive line, then everything works better on the defense. So okay. um, I'm, so who do you prefer? Do you prefer prefer uh, Alec Lindstrom or Cole Strange in this spot? Well, actually, Lindstrom's rated down. I mean, I didn't realize he was going to be rated at 136 and we're picking at 114. Exactly. So he's still going to be there. Yes. Most likely. Well, in there, he's, yeah. And he's there's the guy Greg I want. Dolchich, which is the, you know. He he's going to be there, but he, and he's the guy that you want, but do you want, do you want him at 114 or do you want him at 152? I want him at well, I want him at 152, but he won't be there because uh, he's. This is not that big of a stretch. Things. Yeah, I'd rather have him at 119 um, to scroll up. And in fact, the Dulcich is still there. He's a guy that I hope we could get it at 152. Yes. Okay, so there's there's a good linebacker, Terrell Bernard. I'm not. I can't remember Terrell Bernard. He's uh, he's an undersized kind of a guy. Yeah, he's a he's he can give you some some you know edge rushing a little bit. Vernon McKinley, the safety. I think that's physical free safety. free safety. Physical free safety with a lot of speed. I think that should be our pick. Okay. Let's give give us some some defensive uh, defensive back help where this team yeah. really needs it. All right, so we've gone uh, to the to our next pick, Keith. Do you want to go ahead and, and get one of these centers then? Yeah. Oh, actually, the other center went off the board. Aye. So let me check that really quick. Yeah, Alec Lindstrom went right behind us. <laughs> hey, you <laughs> know what? Funny. That's okay. I'm yeah. like, I'm like, ooh, we need a center, but he's. I wasn't sold on it being him. Um, okay. So, so, so Isaiah likely is the best value on the board. True. I still would rather wait and get um, Dulcich with the next pick if he's there. Okay. Jermaine Waller at corner. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm uh, Brian Asamoa, linebacker. Yeah, he's, he's he's underrated. I think that he's he could potentially be the best value on this board right now let me look up Jermaine Waller really quick because I can't remember where he's what he's got going on so yeah um Jermaine Waller is interesting because he's 6'1 but he's 175 but he runs a 4'4 540 so he is skinny yes um Cole Strange is there he's an up-and-comer had a great senior bowl He's moving up draft boards all over the place. Let me look at this list really quick. Um, and there's Dulcich down there. Dulcich, Neil Farrell. Um, so. Yep. Yeah, I'm I I'm kind of stuck on the linebacker. Um, mm -hmm. Where'd he go? Or or Isaiah Likely. So to me, I mean, there's a lot of value there with likely. Yeah. I know that tight end is kind of undervalued, but in our system, it's especially if we don't get um, which I'm call it back. Um, you know who I'm talking about, right? Yep. Uh, Everett. There you go. I we're gonna like, we're gonna yeah. need a guy, and mm -hmm. uh, so that would and be I, great. Isaiah likely. I mean, yeah, he's not a he's not a blocker. Um, he is a he is a receiving he's a weapon you know, he's a joker type tight end but i mean you saw seattle run um you know jet sweeps with uh, a tight end this year so um i think he would be a, he would be a nice fit like i said i was kind of waiting for dulcich I, I, mm -hmm. and we could do that he could be he could be there with our next pick let's i'm just looking at value it's hard darian beavers yeah. would be would be a, a great pick let me see Beavers is a linebacker out of Cincinnati. For those of you listening, um, got some speed. 
uh, a guy who's kind of underrated. Um, uh, Samoa is, is but, a higher rated but, prospect, but, though. Yeah, but to me, um, Brian Osamoa the second um, out of Oklahoma, he's the guy that I think is going to go first in mm-hmm. the in the real draft. Uh, I think yes. he's just a better player, he's underrated at this point. Um, physical guy, got a you know, got speed. Um, a guy that's going to be and and played very well at the Senior Bowl. Yes, he did, uh, and he's, he's on just, Bruce Feldman's freak list. Yeah, he's he's athletically crazy. So I, let's do that. Okay. Let's go get that get that linebacker. Um, make sure that they now have, you know, their front seven kind of set. All right, let's see who's on. We're at one fifty two. Mm-hmm. Let's see who's available. God, see if these running backs. This is crazy. Rashad White is a great pass catcher out of the backfield with tremendous speed. That that would be interesting. We already yeah. have one, obviously, but. There's so many running backs up here. It's just kind of crazy. Um, you know, Damian. And Pierce there's is, there is, is Greg Greg yeah. Dulcich. Yeah. And um that I let's let's not spend too much time thinking about this. Do it, just do it. Who'd, like that's we, yeah, because we passed on the other the other guy, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. We went and got the linebacker instead, now getting Dulcich, who's a more complete And now we're tight waiting end, for a while here. Than likely, yeah. So we passed on Likely, who's the pass-catching, you know, Joker type, um, to get Dulcich, who is a more yes. complete player. Yes. Um, not as athletically freaky, but is a more complete player. He can do um, other things. And we were able yep. to get him later in the draft. So. so now we're on the clock at 198. We picked up a pick. And um, Velas Jones here to me is the highest upside player right here. Um, I'm just looking at him. I just immediately my eyes went to Velas Jones. Is he's like six foot, but he's got speed for days. Keith mm-hmm. runs a fourth. I'm just going off my memory. I think he runs a four three eight four three seven forty. Does kick returns, all that kind of stuff. He'd be your, you know, underneath player. He could take the top off for you, but um, you know, he's a slot guy all day. And the Seahawks could use a slot guy um, because, you know, you know, you've got your, when you your two optimize starters. that offense, you, you, yeah. you do need a slot guy. Well, and they've got their, they've got their two outside guys. And I know that what they tend to do is they move, uh, lock it into the slot when they bring in, you know, someone, but having, you know, being able to go to, to four, um, to four wide and, and doing that, like that makes a lot of sense. Uh, the I'm other guy, going, I'm just going through this list just to see, make sure. Nope. The other guy up near the top that I um, see so any of your way down there. The other guy yeah. back up near the top that I was looking at was the other wide receiver. Um, uh, where, there we go, Danny Gray. Danny Gray is also a great wide receiver. So um, I like Velas Jones out of those well, two. Let's do Velas Jones then. Okay. And now we've got one more pick to finish it out. And um, 226. Let's see where we're at. Linebacker makes sense here. Safety, guys that play special teams, maybe an upside. Um, there's Carson Wells from Edge from Colorado. Um, Malcolm Rodriguez, linebacker, are, is interesting. An interior offensive lineman or offensive lineman in general. Dontario Drummond is another wide receiver, Keith, that's got some upside. Same with Trey Turner. Is CJ Verdell that you like a lot that is yep. sitting there as a special teams guy and a running back that could add to your room as kind of a change of pace guy? I like CJ. His the only my my question with him is, man, are is there any tread left on those tires after his usage? Um, and he's college? been hurt so much though; his usage hasn't been. Well, that's kind of what I mean. Like hook. he's 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 been hurt so much. That means. He's. I, I think he's basically what we're saying is that that you know they he's been worn out, so that's why he's been mm-hmm. hurt. So interesting. Now there is another corner out here somewhere, Monteric Brown, that I like. Um, I know nothing about him. Yeah, go look at Mon- Monteric Brown really quick. Uh, Monteric Brown's kind of a uh, you know it's six foot, uh, two hundred pounds, but he's a physical corner. He's a guy that really knows how to tackle. Um, Pete, Pete Carroll kind of guy would be a special teams guy that would, you know, make plays. Um, his, his speed is, you know, average, but he's kind of a jack of all trades, kind of a corner. I think it would be a good, good fit uh, upside 
player at that spot. Um, well, I mean, think about where we are, where we are in the draft. We're, we're yeah. at 226. We're in round seven. Upside um, and special teams is what you're picking at this yes. spot. Right. Is you're picking a guy that you know can contribute on special teams and hopefully has the potential to come in and become a starter eventually. Um, you're not picking a guy that's going to come in and play. Yeah. If you are picking a guy that's going to come in and play at 226, your roster is a mess. So what are you um, thinking? Either wide receiver or corner? I like the corner. I think we haven't taken a corner. This is a team that needs a corner. Um, even if it's a, you know, the fifth corner on the roster this year, they need to get a corner in this draft. So I think Monteric Brown's the right pick. All right. I do too. I think it's I think, an undervalued as well. I think people are going to like that pick. I looked into him a little bit um, this last week, and um, I really like it. So here's our draft, um, including the trades. We traded uh, down twice, and we traded up to get our guy. Um, so I like it. So our draft we, was we missed um, out on we missed out on Perry and Winfrey, which is yep. you know is we what got, it is. We got. Um, and Igbari, the edge rusher of five tech at 50. We got Isaiah Spiller, who I think might be the, uh, the best running back in this draft at 72. Um, our left tackle of the future in Abraham Lucas. He might need a year of like seasoning um, before he's ready to be that guy. Uh, but I, he's got the talent um, at 86. Um, Verone McKinley, um, the safety it's free safeties. Yep. He's got speed, yep. but also really physical. Yep. When for you run that, too, when you run that too high, he's scheme diverse for you. Yeah, that where he can come, go up, come back. You know, yep. all over the place. Yep. Brian Osamoa the second uh, at That's linebacker. That's an underrated pick. That he's a guy that, um, you know, basically. Cody Barton's kind of the jack of all trades on this on on the defense currently, and Awesome was an upgrade on on Cody Barton, and yeah. so it leaves Cody Barton in that role and lets Asumo take over, you know, a starting spot if Bobby Wagner leaves, and if it doesn't, well, now you've got four linebackers that yes. can actually play. Um, Greg Dulcich at tight end is might be the best value pick in it's the best uh, fit for the Seahawks too. I mean, ju- that's at one fifty two that is your best um, tight end on the roster unless they bring Gerald Everett back. Um, Valus Jones, the wide receiver, uh, is a nice pick at 198, and then Monteric Brown at 226. I think we did we did really yeah. well. I, we, yeah. Missing out on, on Perry and Winfrey hurts because uh, we kind of screwed that up, but we ended up with a really nice, solid, well-rounded draft. Yeah. And I'm really happy with it. Yeah, no, I am too. I am too. Yeah, I you know the the Winfrey thing is interesting, um, but you can't get married to, to a prospect so much that it ruins your entire draft. You got to you got to pivot and move on. I thought we did that with Kingsley Umbari. Um, mm-hmm. I think he's he's kind of going to be that guy that uh, that has the ability to be scheme diverse. Isaiah Spiller, you know me, I like Isaiah Spiller. I think that he's a perfect fit in Seattle's offense. I think with Chris Carson's neck thing, not knowing that, um, with Rashad Penny up in the up in the air, you've just got to invest in that position. Um, I know the, that the players that don't want to. Yeah, it wasn't but it's the in team's the third first round. pick. Yeah, it yes, wasn't it was the first. first pick, it's it's third in the third round. round. It's great yeah. value at that spot. It was great value at, at the seventy-two. Best, the best running back in the draft, and they got uh, him in the third round. And I and Abraham Lucas. The more we looked into him, Keith, the more we liked him thought he would be a great fit on this offense because of his um athleticism Mm -hmm. um and at at this point it would be a lot more athletic than brown um having brown back for one season um would would be i think good for the seahawks and then moving on stone fourth sites on the roster as well but we still don't know exactly what we've got there so this is a good investment in round three Vernon, uh, Verone McKinley, again, we talked about. I, I like all these picks. I I think overall I'm I'm really happy. So what else? Is that it? I think that's it. That's that's our draft with, with three trades, two down, one up. Um, we ended up getting a a really nice collection of of, of talent uh in order to come in. A lot of freaky athletes too, very sea hockey. Um so and when yeah. I post the uh when I post the show, I'll I'll do a screenshot of the um, of the cool. draft. Yeah, cool. 
Awesome. So I think that's it. Next time, I, I don't know exactly what we're doing. Um, I never know what we're doing. I, I just, can't remember I'm just, this. I'm just here faking it. And you're doing all the work. Uh, uh. Next, <laughs> next time, we're supposed to either have a team news update. Mm -hmm. or uh and then the following week was the combine preview show yep. so we're getting very close we're, we're talking about prospects all the time now from now until the end so yep um we are also, so i think going in at this point we need to hopefully we can get a, a better idea of exactly what the scheme is going to look like um with all the new the new defensive coaches and all the I, new scheming going on the way that they were um, talking keith it sounded like they were moving very very close to saying three four out loud yeah. Like, you know um, what I mean? It's like, well, I mean, you might you as well have, just call it a three, four and just get the personnel in here to, to, to do that. Well, and they, they did go to um, this last year, they, they moved to that bare front, um, which, so uh, KJ Wright did a, um, did a, an interview after the season. And he said that was why they let him go. And I mean, they didn't let him, they didn't bring him back um, was that since they were switching to that bare front up front, um, basically they needed different things at linebacker and he was no longer a scheme fit for them. Um, and that's why they, they, they moved on mm -hmm. from him. Um, yeah, now and, we've talked about the need for, um, dropping back in coverage in the middle, which I think is, is going to be extremely important. So you need your most athletic linebacker at middle linebacker in this scheme. And I what, if you, what are we going to do there? If they do go to a three, four, um, you know, you could put Brooks next to Wagner and let Brooks do the uh, the deep coverage part and um, give Wagner a, <clears throat> a zone. Uh, and so you end up, you can kind of do that. Uh, the other thing is, you're, if you're going to a 3-4, you need more linebackers. You just do. So And, uh, and another safety. Yeah. yeah so we, we did both in this safety. draft. We yeah. did. Yeah. Okay. So let's get out of here. Find Keith on Twitter, at MyersNFL. I'm at... Uh, MW Seahawks. The show is at Hawks Playbook. SeahawksPlaybook.com is your source for everything and find us on your favorite podcast platform and YouTube. Please subscribe and share. So until next time, go Hawks. Seahawks Playbook podcast listeners, thanks for joining us for another edition of the show. You can find us on Twitter. Bill is at MW Seahawk. Keith is at Myers NFL. And the show is at Hawks Playbook. You can listen and subscribe to the show at SeahawksPlaybook.com.